Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Southeast Media Sunrise, dedicated to giving a voice to authors of all genres. I'm your host, Jody Hawkinson. Joining us remotely by phone today is Jennifer Noel Taylor, author of Spiritual and Broke, How to Stop Struggling with Money and Live Your Purpose. Jennifer is an energy healing practitioner, self-help motivator, and the CEO of Quantum Touch Incorporated. She has dedicated her life work to helping people discover the healing power of their love. Jennifer holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science with a minor in Philosophy. After graduating, she started her first job as a software engineer at a big company in San Diego. Like so many people, she felt incredibly trapped and depressed at a job that paid the bills but didn't align with her true passion in life. She innately knew that she had a purpose and felt keenly aware that she was not following her true calling in life. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for joining us today. Great. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So the most common block to abundance from your perspective is? Well, I believe that it's feeling disempowered, feeling that it's hopeless, feeling like a victim. And, and to me, that's what tends to get in the way for a lot of people. Can you offer some tips to get out of debt and build savings while following your life purpose? Basically, there's a lot of things I think people can do. Um, the most important thing, I feel like, is reclaiming your power, feeling like there is hope that it can be done. And then from there, there's several ways to go about it. One is I feel that if you take a look at your expenses, and um, what I'd like to do is actually look at my bank statement and look at, you know, everything I'm spending money on and ask yourself um, a key question. Does this expense spark joy? It's kind of like doing a Marie Kondo on your expenses. As Marie Kondo wrote that book um, about tidying up. And so anyways, what I found is that when I actually look at my expenses and ask myself that question, does it spark joy? The answer for a lot of them um, is no. And so if you can be conscious of going through each one and, and only spending money on things that actually are give you joy, um, that's how I naturally cut a lot of expenses out of my budget. Um, and then we can also talk about if people feel like they're not bringing enough income. I have um, some tips in my book that I talk about about how to change your level of income as well. So speaking of budgets, let's talk about why budgets don't work. So, yeah, so what I found is that when I uh, set out to pay my debt off and, and uh, develop savings, that I first started uh, to do a budget. I put myself on a budget and said, okay, I'm only allowed to spend a certain amount of money per month, and I need to make more than I spend. And that's typical of a budget. And uh, so I tried to follow it for a few days, and I even cut up my credit card. And then what I noticed is that a day later, I was fishing through the trash trying to dig out my credit card. And um, so I think budgets don't work because they're very hard to stick to. Very few people, I feel like, have the, the willpower to try to stick to their budget. Just like, you know, sticking to a diet is really hard for a lot of people. And ultimately, uh, the weight comes back with a vengeance. So in... Instead of doing a budget, um, I like to go from a different angle and, as I said, like look at your consciousness around your spending and how your spending actually feels to you rather than just trying to mechanically align it into a spreadsheet. Very interesting. Let's talk about how to discover your life purpose. Okay, sure. So discovering your life purpose, um, first of all, I'm operating under the assumption that we all came here with a purpose. And if you dive deeper into that assumption, I also believe that we're spiritual beings um, having a, a human experience so that we're all born in, into the earth with a purpose. And that purpose is written in our hearts. Like our heart knows what we're here to do. So one of the things that I feel like is really necessary to discover your purpose is to open your heart and, and feel into what you love. And um, that usually will provide a lot of clues into your purpose. So, for example, in my case, I went to Cal Poly and got a degree in computer science and started working in computers. But then I realized as I got into the software engineering field that I was just not following my purpose. And what I really loved was working um, 
doing uh, body work and studying massage. So I started following what I loved outside of work. And then it eventually led into what I do now, which is uh, running an energy medicine corporation. So I feel like taking some baby steps into doing what you love, no matter what that is, will guide you into your purpose. How eloquently put. Why don't budgets address the root cause of why someone is spiritual and broke? A budget, first of all, is really hard to stick to. And then there's something else, another phenomenon that I noticed about budgets. When I tried to do a budget and when I found the willpower to actually stick to it, I noticed something really odd. And I've talked to some other people and they noticed this too. No matter what I did, my expenses always matched my income. So if, for example, I ended up cutting a couple of thousand dollars off my expenses, my income would go down to match that. Or if I somehow figured out how to raise my income, I'd have some kind of unexpected expense that would match my income. So my income expenses always matched no matter what I did. And it got really frustrating. And I felt like even with following a budget or trying to follow a budget, this is totally hopeless. And so what I realized is that basically our finances are following our energy, not just a mathematical formula. And so addressing our actual relationship with money was really more important than trying to force myself to follow a budget. So can you give us an example of ways you can allocate money for things that bring you joy? Um, So this is really personal, but every day, you know, we spend money every day on things. And um, there's things that I think that we spend money on that we really love. And then there's things that we spend money on that we feel maybe obligated or that we don't even love or enjoy. So, for example, um, if you're in the checkout line at Whole Foods and you're just sorting through a magazine and you decide, oh, I'm just going to throw this into my cart, um, I've noticed that personally those magazines don't bring me a lot of joy. Like I barely even read them. And if I do, they, they don't necessarily make me happy. But um, putting money into creating uh, jewelry is something that I've learned to really love lately. So that's an example of allocating my money into stuff that I really enjoy versus spending on something that doesn't really bring me much satisfaction. Very good. Well, which brings up the idea of self-worth. Do budgets address issues around self-worth? So budgets, I view, fail to address two issues. One is why do we spend money on things that we don't love? And the second is why aren't we earning money in alignment with our worth? And I believe that a lot of people, especially in the coaching and healing fields, are are undercharging for their work. I see this all the time. Someone's charging like $30 for an hour of coaching or an hour of healing And there's no way you can get ahead doing that or somebody's running a a yoga studio and they're not charging enough of their students to actually make it work financially. And I believe that tends to boil down to these feelings of unworthy that um, I don't deserve to run my life at a profit. I deserve to be suffering. I deserve to have deficit. These are all areas where the lack of self-worth appears. So to, to change this, I feel it's really important to recognize when these scripts of unworthiness are at play in our lives and um, to modify, like if you're doing business for yourself, to modify your pricing so that you can make a profit. I think some people feel like that they somehow deserve to run their life at a deficit or they deserve to only get by. So those are some beliefs to really look at. I love that viewpoint. Could you talk about the moment you were in the back seat of a police car? Um, okay, so yeah, so this is how I start out my book. Um, I ended up in the back seat of a police car, and um, it was a, a, a dark moment for me, but I had a really big aha moment about why I was struggling so much in life in general, not just with money, but everything in life. And so here's what happened. Somebody broke into my house in the middle of the night, And it turned into a robbery and a sexual assault. And as part of, yeah, crazy, right? 
Um, I guess I've processed it so much I don't really have the emotional reaction anymore to it. But at the moment, I at the time I was definitely in shock when that happened. I can imagine. Um, yeah, but I've done a lot of healing around it, so I'm kind of more neutral around it. Um, but anyway, so as part of the crime scene investigation, the cops um, took me to the – they had to take me to the rape trauma center, so they escorted me out to the backseat of the police car. And, uh, yeah, so I was just sitting there, you know, which is kind of weird because never, you know, entertained a life of crime. It was the first time I was back there. And uh, just – you know, sitting back there in a kind of a state of shock. And uh, over the radio, I heard one of the officers say, um, we're now transporting the victim to the rape trauma center. And um, I have to say that my image of myself at that time was one a, of a spiritual healer and leader, uh, entrepreneur. I was teaching, you know, that we're empowered, you know, the law of attraction and empowerment. And so when I was being labeled as a victim, I felt really angry about that. I was very triggered because I thought this doesn't match my beliefs around myself because I view myself as this evolved, enlightened, spiritual healer. So I was really upset to be uh, looked at as a victim. And, and then I was just sitting there and I thought about it more and it just it dawned on me that I was living my life as a victim. I was blaming God, the IRS, the president, and, and everything else under the sun for my debt. I was blaming, you know, men for being unavailable. All the men I dated seemed to be unavailable. I just was doing this blank thing in my life. And so I, I was despite talking about the law of attraction and empowerment, I was behaving like a victim. I was a hypocrite. And um, that was a huge wake-up call for me. And I thought, this is it. This is the last time I'm ever labeled as a victim. This this needs to shift. The whole victim mentality needs to, needs to totally leave my life. And um, that was, that was the moment things started to shift in my life because I had that wake-up call. So that was your turning point. That was a turning point, yeah. So tell me, what is quantum touch? So quantum touch is a uh, modality of energy medicine. I don't know if you're familiar with energy medicine. Uh, No, Uh, I'm not. (laughs) No, okay, okay. Um, Okay, cool. Well, awesome. Um, Yeah, so... Energy medicine is a form of alternative healing that works with the life force energy. Um, So I'll give you an example. Chiropractics believe that by aligning the spine, the energy flow of the body will be in balance. Okay. And so, you know, acupuncture is kind of similar. So acupuncture, you know, you put all those needles in a person Mm -hmm. at certain meridians um, with the intent of aligning the energy and bringing the body into balance. So energy healing works on the same concept that we um, work with the energy of the body to create harmony and health and peace. And once the energy is aligned, the body will has the ability to physically heal whatever is going on. And um, I've been doing this 17 years, and I've seen a lot of really, sometimes what would be called the miraculous, you know, the unexplained miracles happening. And most of the time we see improvement in a lot of different conditions, such as we've seen pain relief, you know, relaxation, um, facilitation of healing on on various levels, emotional and physical. And uh, I I love the energy medicine because it it really can help a lot of people. Oh, that's wonderful. So what made you write this book after the success of your first book, Love Incorporated? Um. This book is really near and dear to my heart because a lot of people um, in my in the field of spirituality um, they want to help and, and do something beautiful for the world, and yet so many people I run into in the spiritual um, field are struggling with money, and um, and I was struggling with money um, 
before when I you know before I um, figured it out, I had uh, one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars of debt and no savings. So it was always kind of this panic zone when I tried to you know when when like my car would break or anything like that would happen. And seventy five percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and uh, it's super stressful. Mm-hmm. To to be you know on the edge like that and, and just not having anything you know anything saved or no savings for a down payment for a house or an emergency and always kind of feeling like you're never really getting ahead and uh, so I wrote this book to really address that for people is like why aren't we getting ahead and and how to really fix that what's next for you what is next for Jennifer Next for Jennifer, well, I'm I'm really excited because I bought a piece of land and uh, I am working with an architect right now to build a house. So I'm I'm building a uh, storybook cottage type of house. I think it'll be super really cute and fun. So that's kind of my next project right now. Um, and then I'm also looking at creating a webinar on the topic of spiritual and broke. And if you're a spiritually aligned person, how can you change your financial situation? And uh, so kind of guiding through people through this process of turning the finances around. So those are kind of two projects on my forefront. Oh, that's fantastic. So anyone interested in purchasing this book, uh, where can they go to Amazon or? Um, yeah, so the book's available on Amazon mm-hmm. under Spiritual and Growth. Okay. And then, um, yeah, it's also there's a link to it on my website as well. Um, which is uh, jennifernoeltaylor.com. And I understand if you sign up uh, there, you can receive uh, 50 pages of the book for free and try it out. And try it out and see if you resonate and see if it uh, strikes a chord with you before you purchase the book. Um, yeah, so it's, and I don't worry if you sign up for my mailing list, I won't bombard you with a whole bunch of unwanted emails. Just <laughs> occasionally I email people. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So listeners, that's Jennifer Noel Taylor, author of Spiritual and Broke, How to Stop Struggling with Money and Live Your Purpose. And for more information, you can go to jennifernoeltaylor.com, sign up for the email and receive 50 pages of the book for free. Thanks again for joining us today, Jennifer. Great. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And listeners, if you're interested in getting your book published, please visit us at semediapro.com and click on the book publishing link. This is Jody Hawkinson, host of Southeast Media Sunrise, Southeast Media Productions. Like us on Facebook at Southeast Media Productions or visit our website at semediapro.com. <laughs>